Today, I want to show you a platform where you can create powerful chatbots without writing a single line of code. These are just drag and drop components which you can connect them together to create chatbots. If you have been following my channel, I create a lot of contents using Langchain. But uh, to make it work, you need to write quite a bit of code in Python or JavaScript. So I wanted to look at platforms that let you build applications on in large language models without writing any code. I came across these two different options. The first one is called Flowwise, which is using Lang.js. They build a pretty nice um, user interface on top of it. The second one is called Langflow, and it's using a very similar concept. So you have drag and drop components, which you connect them together to create applications. Now, the interface of both Langflow as well as Langwise looks very similar. So in this video, um, I'll show you how to install one of them and we'll be specifically focusing on Langflow. Uh, in the subsequent video, I might create a video for uh, Flowwise as well. I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step installation process and then I'll show you how you can create uh, different applications. And we will look at some more uh, complicated examples as well. Now, in the background, both Flowwise and uh, Langflow, they are using Langchain, and it's just a wrapper around it. If you are not familiar with Langchain and or want to understand the basic concepts, so I would uh, recommend you watching this video. Let's quickly look at the installation process. I'm on Windows, but the installation is going to uh, remain pretty consistent across different platforms. Uh, unfortunately, you still need Python in order to run um, uh, these UI-based uh, platforms. So first, I recommend to install uh, Python as well as Conda and create a new virtual environment for this specific project. So in order to create a virtual environment, we're going to be using Conda. So I'm going to say Conda create, then dash n, and now we need to give a name to our new virtual environment. So I already have a virtual environment called Flow. Uh, but you can give it any name that you want. Once you create your virtual environment, then you need to activate it. So we're going to use a Conda activate and then the virtual environment um, that I already have. So I'm going to call it Langflow. Click enter, right? And you see uh, that we are now inside our virtual environment. Okay, next we'll need to install the uh, Langflow package. So we're going to be using pip installed and then Langflow. I have already installed it. So you're going to see that it says the requirement satisfied. Uh, but if you're installing it for the first time, this step is going to uh, take quite some time. Okay, next we just need to run um, this command, which is Python uh, dash M uh, Langflow, or you can just type in uh, Langflow. Both of them should work. So let's see what happens. So it simply started a, a web application uh, on this specific IP address, which is your local host. And it's using 7860 as the port. Simply go to your browser and uh, type in that address and you will see that the application is up and running. Now in the background, you're going to see everything that is happening in here. So it's already throwing some error messages. We will look at this in a little bit why that is uh, happening. Now, um, the basic structure, so it has uh, some components. These are all the components that are available within Langchain. And as I, as I mentioned before, it's using Langchain in the background. So you can uh, come here and switch between the light and dark theme. I like the dark theme, so I'm going to keep this for the rest of the video. This is a very simple drag and drop, uh, drop interface. You simply drag different components, connect them together to create applications. So let's look at different components that are available. So there are a few agents, so CSV agents, JSON agent. Then in terms of chains, so these are the chains that are available within Langchain. Um, so I, I think not all of them are available, but for example, you can create a LLM chain or conversation chain, right? Uh, then for loading different types of documents, uh, they have a pretty comprehensive list. For example, there's a file PDF loader, there is a text loader. Uh, if you want to interact with the website, so there is a web-based loader as well. We will look at a couple of examples just in a little bit, right? 
Then in terms of embeddings, right now, uh, they only seem to be supporting OI, OpenAI's embeddings, but this might uh, actually change. They probably should include support for other ones. In terms of LLMs, so there's a chat OpenAI, Hugging Face Hub, uh, Llama CPP, OpenAI. So this is good. Uh, it's a good start. Then there are uh, modules for memory as well. So if you want to add memory to your chatbots, then in terms of prompts, so let's see what do they have. They have a prompt template. That's nice. And then zero shot prompt, few shot prompt template. This is good. Uh, it's it's use, useful. And then there's a, a character text splitter. This is important for splitting your documents, especially um, if they are exceeding the context window of your large language model. Okay, so they have pretty nice set of tools that you can interact with. Uh, these tools are enough to start experimenting with large language models. So this is great for creating quick prototypes. So let's look at uh, how we would do that. So for example, let's say I want to create a chatbot. So I'm going to using uh, I'm going to use the conversation chain. All right, let me make it a little bigger so it's visible. Okay. And then uh, in order to connect this conversation change, we need a large language model. So to keep things very simple, we will start with uh, the chat OpenAI. That's the basic uh, chat bot uh, from OpenAI. Okay. Now, uh, if you see the conversation chain, so it expects two inputs. One is the memory and the other one is the LLM. That's the larger language model. The output is going to be a conversation chain, right? Uh, for this specific module, if you see, it has just only one output, which is the op chat OpenAI, right? Now, you can simply connect these together. Uh, for some reason, the connection is not really visible, but there is a connection. Let me switch it to light mode so you can see. We simply connected these two points. Now, they are uh, connecting together, connected together. Now, in order to experiment with this, they have provided this simple uh, chat interface. So whatever uh, workflow you create, uh, and if it works, then you will be able to use this as a chat here, right? And um, the good great thing is they also have this code section. So it shows you if you create a workflow, how you can use this on your own Python code, uh, if you want to par uh, integrate it as a part of an application, right? So here is how it will work with the API. So right now our uh, flow is called new flow. So it created a, uh, it will create a JSON file for that, right? If you want to directly use the um, Python version of Langflow, so you simply uh, load your JSON file and then you can ask it a question. We will look at this in more details in a little bit. So first let's look at here um, for this uh, chat OpenAI, we have uh, four different options, which is 3.5 Turbo, that's the chat GPT. GPT-4 and GPT-32K. Right now, I only have access to uh, the chat GPT version, so I'm going to be using that. Then you can set, set the temperature, so let's keep it to zero. And then you need to provide the OpenAI uh, API key. Um, you can get the OpenAI API key from your account, so I went ahead, copied that. Let me paste it here, right? And I think we should be all set. Now, if you uh, notice, this turned to a uh, green tick, which means that we are ready uh, to use this workflow. Now, in order to use it, you need to simply go here, right? And let's ask uh, a question. So I'm going to say, what is the uh, capital of USA? Okay. And uh, this should get a response from uh, ChatGPT. So it's processing it. You can actually look at the... Um, command line uh, where you can see everything that is happening. Okay, so it came up with a response saying that the capital of US is Washington DC, which is correct. And then it provided some more details because uh, it's using ChatGPT, right? And here is uh, in the back end. So it's using a prompt template. Uh, and the prompt template is the following is a friendly conversation between a human and AI. The AI is talkative and provides lots of specific details from its context, right? And then uh, it's simply providing the prompt that we give it and the AI responds. Uh, once it's execute the prompt template, then it says finish chain, right? So uh, if you're familiar with uh, Langchain prompts or prompt templates, this will look very familiar. 
Okay, uh, so this is how you create a very basic chatbot, but let's add uh, some memory to it because we want it to remember previous conversations. So we'll go to memories, then I can select this conversation buffer memory, right? And this has a history key. So what's going to happen is it will provide the prompt as well as the history of the conversation back to uh, our uh, chat GPT, right? So we're going to connect this, Right. And let me just switch it again. Yes, it's connected, right? So now uh, this specific workflow should have memory included. Just make sure that you wait for uh, this to turn green. All right, so it's now ready to use. So I'm going to go back to my chat interface and I'm going to remove the previous chat. All right, just ask the same question again. What is the capital of USA? All right, and let's see what it comes up with. So again, it says the capital of the USA is Washington, D.C. This is great. All right, uh, let's ask it, what is its population? All right, so now it should remember the context that we are talking about, Washington, DC. So this is pretty neat. You're able to inter uh, create this workflow or the flow, uh, but how do you use this in your own applications? Um, so for that, if you go back to their um, GitHub uh, page, they have provided an example how you can deploy this on Google Cloud and all of it, all, also on Gina AI Cloud. I'm, I'm not familiar with this, but you can uh, do that with them. Essentially, all you need is just the JSON file of your workflow. Now, let me show you how you can create that JSON file. So simply go to export, right? Here, you give a name. So let's say I'm going to call it chatbot basic, right? Then you can give a description, right? Uh, if you want to store the API keys as a part of your flow, you can do that, but I'm not going to do that. And then simply uh, click on download flow. So here's the example uh, JSON document that you created, right? And and you can see that at the back end, it's actually using LangChain for everything. So for example, if you look in here, this is what it's calling uh, at the back end. So once you create a flow, you can uh, integrate it as a part of your Python code or your application. So for example, if you use want to use that specific flow that we just created, so you're going to use this code segment. Now, let's say you created a flow, you saved it, and you want to load it to modify it. For that, you need to go click on import, and then you have two options. You can look at a few examples, or you can load uh, local files. So we'll click on uh, local files, and then you can simply select uh, the JSON file that you have already created. So that's when we're going to open the same workflow in just another tab. So this is how you create uh, export and load uh, workflows. It's, it's a very great tool for quick experimentations and prototyping. But now let's look at um, some more complicated examples that they have. We're not going to be running those examples, but just look at the flows uh, they are created. So we'll go to the examples. And then you can see uh, there are different uh, options or examples that are available. So, for example, here is a getting started basic chat, a bot with prompt and history. That's what we created. Then you have a vector store PDF loader. So uh, maybe we'll just first look at the vector store. Um, so let's look at different components that are being using as this uh, the part of this vector store flow. So first you have the uh, web-based loader so it seems like it's loading web pages or the faq page uh, from this specific website here is the website they're using in this uh, example uh, next they have a character splitter which uh, simply divides this document into different chunks uh, in this case they are using a chunk size of thousand with a uh, uh, 200 uh, tokens overlap um, followed by that is a um, Chroma Vector DB or the Vector Store. So it takes these uh, chunks together uh, uh, along with the OpenAI embedding model and create embeddings for each of these documents, right? And then it simply have another component, which is the information related to the Vector Store. Now, if you have been following my videos, uh, this whole workflow is very similar to what I have been showing. Uh, I actually had an example video on how to create a custom chatbot for your websites. So if you want to get a deeper understanding of all the components involved, so watch that video. Now back to the workflow again. 
then they're connecting uh, the vector db as a part of a chain. Uh, and in this case, they are connecting that uh, to a large language model, uh, which is the Da Vinci uh, 003 model, right? So that's going to be the large language model. Uh, the great thing about this tool is it lets you uh, set up different options. So for example, you can choose a different um, LLM if you want to. So in order to run a flow like this, you will have to provide your open AI key uh, put to the uh, embeddings model as well as the LLM model. Okay, uh, let's also look at a couple of more examples. So maybe we'll look at the PDF loader. Um, talking to PDFs right now is kind of a hot topic. So the rest of the workflow is very similar to what we saw for the vector straw. The only change is now they're using a PDF loader, right? So you can simply select a PDF document and then uh, it will through it will go through the whole rest of the flow. So I'll be creating um, a lot more detailed videos on how to build applications and run those. I ran into a few issues here. Uh, so I think there are some bugs still in the code. Um, so I wasn't able to run like a PDF uh, loader, but uh, it might be on my end. I might have some issues in the installation. Um, overall, it's a great concept and uh, if executed well, it's a great tool that lets you um, do very quick prototyping. Okay, play around with it and see if this can be useful in your own workflows. I will be making videos on the Flowwise as well and compare both these tools. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Uh, if you like the video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.